Thank you, Courtney. That was a surprise this morning. I love that song. Oh my goodness, thank you all for coming this morning. We welcome you, we welcome you to Trinity United Methodist Church here in Newport News, Virginia. And I wanna welcome those who are watching or listening on YouTube this morning. We are excited to be here today. This is the day that the Lord has made. I'm gonna rejoice and be glad in it. And I hope that you all are gonna rejoice and be glad as well. So welcome this morning. We are here because God has said that wherever two or three are gathered together, there he is in the midst. Amen. So we are excited that the Spirit of God is with us this morning. Good morning, Rev. Good, good to see you. So we are here and um, got a couple of announcements this morning. Um, we do have uh, our next, where do we go from here? I'm so excited. It was such a wonderful, it's been such a wonderful experience because as we go through this process, I'm listening to you all. I'm learning more about the history of the church and I'm learning more about you all. And it just, uh, just, I mean, I'm excited. So we have two more sessions. If you haven't joined us, please come. We had, I believe, 13 people and that's the, the, uh, the base that she wants to have at least to keep at least 12 to 13 people involved. So please, please come. And the, the purpose of it is we're trying to figure out where we're gonna go from here as a church. Um, and then we're looking at the possibilities of ministry. This week, we had the demographics given to us of the numbers of um, families in the community, singles, seniors. So we got all that broken down. So it's giving me, uh, and hopefully everybody else, ideas about the types of ministries that we can do here at Trinity. So I'm excited. Um, let's see, our scripture readers are always looking for people to sign up. And you know, this week I heard Dick, um, he's, he, he read scriptures. I don't know if he's listening right now, but he has a really, really nice voice for scripture reading. So I'm throwing that hint out there. So <laughs> I don't know if he's listening. <laughs> But anyway, we are excited. So y'all, we are here to worship. Let's all stand for our call to worship this morning. And if you will notice, the words are up on the screen and we will read accordingly. We look at this world focusing on the pain and confusion, the fears and hatred, which seems to abound. What can we hope? We wait breathlessly for the goodness of creation to be made manifest in all of the world, for this is the promise of God. God is always with us, guiding, rescuing, healing, us. So get ready, dear friends. The promises of God are true. Lord, open our spirits and open our hearts. Bring us hope and peace. Praise the Lord. Let's open, uh, open up with our prayer this morning. We are such a ragtag group of people. Some of us are at the top of our game, and others just struggle to get through each day. Yet you draw us here, where we will find friendship, peace, and hope, not only for our lives right now, but for all the times to come. Stand us up again, O oh God. Dust us off and put us back on the pathways of service and reconciliation. Warm our hearts with your love. Lift our spirits with your power. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let's remain standing as we sing one of the old Darlene Czech songs, Shout to the Lord. And you'll, it's a, one of the contemporary songs found in the, the faith we sing, and I'm hope, hoping everybody knows it. Let's all, let's all sing that together. Just 
That we have in you, God. Hallelujah. Our prayer of illumination. Prepare our hearts, O oh God, to accept your word. Silence in us any voices but your own, so that we may hear your voice. Yes, and also do it. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We will have our scripture reading this morning. Read by Kim. Good morning. Good morning. Scripture reading this morning is from Romans 8, 12 through 25. Therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation, but it's not to the flesh to live according to it. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit put to death the misdeeds of the body, you will live. For those who are led by the Spirit of God are the children of God. The Spirit you receive does not make you slaves, so that you live in fear again. Rather, the Spirit received brought about your adoption to sonship, and by him we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Now, if we are children then we are heirs, heirs of God and co-heirs -heir, with Christ. If indeed we share in his suffering in order that we may also share in his glory. I consider that our present sufferings are not worth comparing with the glory that will be revealed in us. For the creation waits in eager expectation for the children of God to be revealed. For the creation was subjected to frustration not by its own choice, but by the will of the one who subjected it in hope that the creation itself will be liberated from its bondage to decay and brought into the freedom and glory of the children of God. 
We know the whole creation has been groaning as in pains of childbirth right up to the present time. Not only so, but we ourselves, who, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, groan inwardly as we wait eagerly for our adoption to sonship, the redemption of our bodies. For in this hope we are saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Romans 8, 12 through 25, the word of God for the people of God. Yes, be to God. Oh, I have just a quick thought. There is a person that might be coming to church today, but the elevator is not working, right? Okay, because so that, that if that person showed up, they would probably see Rick. I just don't want her to come to church and not be able to get in the building. Somebody is outside already. Praise the Lord. All right, we are joys at our joys and concerns this morning, and I am ready to listen to what God is doing in your lives. I know there's exciting stuff going on, good things, and then we also have concerns too. But the scripture says that all things work together for those that love God, those who are called according to God's purpose. So even the stuff that doesn't seem so good, it all works out in the end. So what are your joys and concerns? I'll write them down. And then when we finish listening, we're going to bring it all to God in prayer. Amen. We got mics going around, I believe. Uh, microphones. So we can never use them so people can hear what's going on. Yeah. I have, I have a couple of prayers. I have two people that I met, those two women that I was telling you about a couple of weeks ago, they're having trouble with their children uh, on drugs. And they're, um, one of the girls, she kind of disappears a year at a time. So her mother was praying that this child would return home. And then the other mother is talking about, uh, one of the child's daughters is going through her bipolar, cycling through uh, mania and depression. So they're asking for prayers for us. Anyone else? Always prayer for uh, Terry and Christy Beard, Terry Whitley. And okay. Christy Beard. Yes. Is Terry walking? Yeah. yeah. He is walking. Okay, so that's a that's a joy, isn't it? That is a joy. He's getting there. He's getting there. Okay. <laughs> All right. He's 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 taking research baby steps with his uh, no he's he's in his good 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 walker okay but he still has no use of that left arm because he's kind of just limp and down. Yes. Okay. Definitely. Okay. Anyone else? Joys. Okay, come on. I have a joy. I, I'm delighted to be here uh, because of what for you and because of what for me. Because <laughs> this morning, I am on vacation, and but even on vacation, I, I, I have to worship someplace. So Amen. thinking, where do I go to find it? But this church just keeps coming up to my heart. Just keeps coming. And I open my, my you know, the map, and I'm just cleaning in that <laughs> <laughs> and I know what the Lord has brought me here, and I'm just delighted to be here worshiping with you all. I can just feel that presence Amen. of the living God among you, and and your joy in singing is just uh, beautiful. Amen. And it's so good to see you. Good to see you. Tell everybody your name. Eliana. I'm Eliana. Eliana Rosario. I'm from the Caribbean, so I have an accent. <laughs> Is it what's what United? What's the name of the United Church? Ben's, Ben's, United, Ben's Methodist. United Methodist Church, yeah, close to Smithfield. That's your neighborhood. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. So we met at conference. Yes. 
Yeah, and we're threatening to go thrift shopping pretty soon, right? <laughs> we talked about it. <laughs> Anyone else? Thank you. In, oh, welcome. Yes. I'm just going to follow up on that since you are from the Benz area and so is she and you kind of just follow I, I would say the Lord had his spirit <laughs> uh, trailing them so that you would have a path to follow right on over here to us and we're glad to have you with us <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'd like to uh, place Brian Morgan's name uh, in the prayer list this morning uh, he's having quite a few changes in his life. His uh, daughter has just moved to Florida for school, for college. He has a son getting ready to leave uh, for the military. Mm. And it kind of leaves him here in the area on his own with the exception of friends and another young daughter, which could be an issue in itself, but mm -hmm. uh, with a mother who has uh, Alzheimer's and oh, she's wow. given him quite a fit. Mm. <laughs> For sharing, for sharing that. Anyone else? Yes. Okay. Okay. Michelle. Okay. Yes. Eliana, Pastor Eliana, is also a blessing to the United Women of Faith. She's mm. been very um, active with the with us women also. Amen. She's got dual roles here. Beautiful. Anyone else? Jackie? Okay. Yeah. All right. Yes, yes. We need a microphone over here. Oh, yeah. I just want to, um, sorry about that, <laughs> ask for travel mercies for the Smith family, which is my daughter. And um, they're gone down to uh, the Outer Banks this week. So just wish, um, you know, they safely return. Okay. Amen. And that they have a good time. <laughs> when she said travel, I remembered the second one. Kobe, um, who has been in at Radford mm -hmm. for the Governor's School of the Gifted, is returning today. So uh, safe travels for him and his grandmother who's picking him up. And for all of those who are out, it's summertime and people are out traveling. So yes. for all of those on the highways, traveling mercies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does anybody know where um, the brother that was at? Um, oh, yes. Are they on the road? No. You remember. <laughs> you knew exactly who I was talking about. <laughs> okay. They're not on the road. I know they're on the road a lot, though, right? Yeah. They're here for the summer. Okay, okay. I wish he would come to church and bring his wife with him. <laughs> anyway. Oh. Okay, got it. Okay. All right. All right. Anyone else? Anyone else? All right. If we are, if we're done with Courtney and I will ask Courtney, how's it going? All right. All right? <laughs> yes. All right. Okay, let's all bow our heads in prayer and take petitions before the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Loving God, we thank you this morning. Thank you, we thank you, we thank you so much. Your love and your tender mercies and your grace just overwhelm us day after day after day. The gift of your Holy Spirit that you give to us to pray and to intercede for other people, we thank you. We ask for the energy and the vision of your spirit for those who are in this battle. Um, life is not easy, God. People are suffering from oppression. People are suffering from injustice. People are suffering from drugs and alcohol, from poverty and hunger. Holy Spirit, help us. We ask for the hope and the comfort of your spirit as we think about those that are living with illnesses mental illnesses and pain and suffering for those who have become darkened by bereavement and loss of those that they've loved. Holy Spirit, be with them. We ask for the peace and the joy of your spirit for those that are living in places where there is war, where there is violence, where people are being 
eaten up with guilt and anxiety for those Christians whose lives have become hard and dry, we ask that your Holy Spirit would sprinkle life into those. We ask for your guidance and for the strength of your spirit for those of us who want to use our gifts and our time and our talents, but are tired in body and mind and spirit. We pray for the rejuvenation of the Holy Spirit in our lives so that we can continue this race that we're on. We give you glory and praise for the gift of the Holy Spirit who is here and available to us at all times, hallelujah. We ask for love and courage. Some of us have family members that are difficult to love and people in our neighborhoods and in our sphere that are very, very difficult to love. But we pray that you would infuse us with your spirit to, to love beyond what we can do in our flesh. We pray that you would just take these bodies of ours that are weak and frail and let us lean more into the Holy Ghost, the, the Holy Spirit who can do what we cannot do in our flesh. We give you praise and glory. God, we lift up those uh, caring this morning um, who is on the, on the road to recovery, God, who you have um, allowed him to go through this situation, but you are bringing him out of it. And I, I pray that every single day of his recovery would be a, a, a milestone towards total healing, God. We lift up uh, Susan Beers, and I'm not really sure of her circumstances, but I pray, God, that you would touch her body, uh, that you would renew her strength. We lift up Shirley Ruth this morning. Uh, she called and uh, she said this, she's having some trouble, Lord, with the sugar. We pray, God, that you would intervene in that situation, that you would help to regulate her body so that she could be to the places where she needs to be, that you would continue to heal her as she's grieving through the loss of her child, her loved one, that you would continue to be a presence in her life, oh God. We lift up those that are in need of traveling grace, oh God, be with them in the road, on the road, in the skies, whatever the mode of transportation, that you, God, would surround them, that you would put your hedge of protection all about them and us as we travel from place to place. God, Brian Morgan, the situation that's coming up in his life um, with a son or child going to the military and all of the different floating pieces there, God. I pray that you would help to bring things together, that you would not, uh, the confusion that comes with all of those things converging on a family at one time, that you would give him the strength and the grace and the patience to be able to go through these processes. God, we are all here today. All of us have needs. Sometimes we don't mention them out loud. So I ask that you would look upon each and every one of us, the unspoken needs, the unspoken desires, the unspoken heart cries, that you, God, you, God, would meet us right where we are, right in those places, in those barren places that we often refuse or don't want to share with other people because sometimes they're embarrassing. Sometimes it, it makes us look bad to other people, we think. But you, we, we open ourselves. We're bare before you. You know all. You see all. So we ask that you would look upon your children, each child in this room, individual father abba we cry out to you this morning by your mercy and by your grace be with us touch us we glorify you we honor you today we lift all of these prayers desires longings and yearnings to you in that name of jesus that name that is above all names amen let us let's pray the lord's prayer together our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Y'all, God is good.
There you go. God is good all the time. And I mean, you, we just don't say it to be saying it. It is a truth. It is a truth that God is good all of the time. Amen. I believe we have the Apostles' Creed. Yes, let's, let's, let's read this together. I believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Or as some folks would say, Amen. Amen, Amen. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Praise the Lord. We're going to keep singing. I'm going to sing when the Spirit says sing. You'll see the words up there. It's one of those good old African-American spirituals. Hey, Pastor. We got a couple of pastors this morning. Amen. It's good to see you, Pastor Cunningham. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's sing, y'all. I'm going to sing like they sing in the church when we're kids. for a couple of more Courtney. <laughs> okay, if we had more time, we'd just keep on with that one, Courtney. But yeah, 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 yeah. Amen. So we are going to be talking about, we're going to continue with uh, the roadside assistance metaphor. Uh, this is part two. Uh, the Holy Spirit began to speak to me this week, and I was trying to figure out what am I going to talk about. So the metaphor of the Holy Spirit as roadside assistance. We kind of talked about that last week. So, and you know, God set it up this week because it started with a woman coming to me saying she wanted to know more about the gifts of the Spirit and she wanted to know about the, the Holy Spirit and the gift of speaking in tongues. And she said she was nervous because some folks at her church invited her to come to a Bible study, but they were going to lay hands on her. And she said she didn't know about that because she has anxiety. So she was scared to have somebody lay their hands on her. I said, well, you know what? I thought about this. If this is a gift from God, do we necessarily have to have somebody lay hands with us, on us to get it? it it's, if somebody gives you a gift, you can take it. You can put your hands out and take it, or you can reject it. So I don't think it has a lot to do with the laying on of hands all the time, Pastor. You can correct me if I'm wrong. You could be in the quietness of your own house and in your own room and ask for God to bless you with God's gifts, okay? So she, we had that conversation. And then my neighbor dropped by, and this let me know that I'm supposed to continue on this topic. She's, she came just out of the blue. Now, this young lady has not been to church since the pandemic started, but while she was in her house, she wrote this book. And she calls it the yummy fruits of the spirit. And she came by and she gave this to me. She said, Pastor, I want you to have this. 
And so I read it while I was in her presence, and I thought, wow, even when folks are away from the church, that doesn't negate the fact that the Holy Spirit is still working. So I have invited her to come and read it. So she'll be my guest coming pretty soon, all right? So this, this is a, a topic that we have to work on. The Holy Spirit often is the most understood, misunderstood person of the Trinity. And the thing is, is that we can't live without the Holy Spirit, y'all. Our lives would be miserable without the Holy Spirit of God. We would be fraught with near misses and, you know, metaphorically, when we're talking about roads, we are rollovers, all right? Front, backside collisions, all of that would happen because when we don't have the Holy Spirit in our journeys, as we go from place to place in this life, there are going to be problems. We know there are going to be problems, but the Holy Spirit helps us on the road as we go from place to place. Now think of it this way. Any type of trip that we take involves some type of navigation, right? All right? Uh, you look at the go up in the air, and the pilot has to depend on the air traffic controller to get the plane from place to place and an assortment of other instruments to get the plane where it needs to go. Uh, when we drive across the country, most of us depend on GPSs. Sometimes they take us where we want to go, sometimes they don't. But we depend on the navigation. And what's that other thing, that voice Siri? Or what's that other woman that talks? What is her name? Ugh, okay, Siri. We depend on Siri. Alexa, yeah, her voice, to get us from place to place. So um, when we travel overseas, what do we do? We depend on guides. We put our lives literally in the hands of other people to lead us, all right? And one of the things that I've heard some people say is that when you go to certain places like Jamaica, most places will take you to the commercialized businesses. But then every now and then you'll find a tour guide that will bless your socks off and take you to a place where people don't usually go, and then you get the, the food that's indigenous to that area, you get to meet folks, and they take you off the trail. And I believe that the Holy Spirit will do that too, will take you to places that, the, you know, roads that people don't travel much, and bless you while you're there. Amen. Amen. One thing that I've also observed about tour guides is that some of the mo they're most, the most impatient, impatient people that I've ever seen. Have you ever seen a tour guide that gets nervous? Have you, Beverly? <laughs> She's thinking about it. First, first, I have never met a tour guide. I don't care if it's a museum tour guide or, you know, I went to Africa. It, you know, everybody was so cool and calm. They're, they're trained to be courteous. They're complimentary. They're cool and they're unruffled. And, and when things don't go as planned, they always seem to have a, a plan B or a C a couple of different options so that the people in the group don't panic and freak out. So that's the, the joy of having a good tour guide and they want to make sure that your trip is so pleasurable that you will always come back. Amen? Amen. Amen. One of the worst things that a tourist could do is to not trust the tour guide. All right? You think about it, because if this person is indigenous to the area, they understand it. You're a newcomer. You've never been there. And then you're going to doubt whether this person is going to take you to the right place or not. You have to trust that person and know that they're going to take you to places that are safe while you're there. Their jobs are on the line. Amen. You know where I'm going with this, right? <laughs> I remember going to Africa and I went, uh, we were up on Table Mountain. And I don't know if you all know about Table Mountain, but it's one of the highest places in South in Johannesburg. And I, you know me into heights, we don't get along too good. So the mountain didn't have any guardrails on the side. And so the bus, the tour bus is driving and they're coming down and they're speeding up this mountain. And as we were going up that mountain, I told the bus driver, I said, stop. I said, I got to get off this thing and I'm gonna walk while you guys drive up. <laughs> I literally got off the bus and walk up the mountain to that flat level area where everybody was. And, and when I got there, minutes later, everybody was fine. They were great. They, you know, they didn't go off the cliff like I thought they were going to. They were fine. And so the group had to talk me into getting on the bus and driving back down with them. And when I did, of course, I closed my eyes. 
and leaned over in my seat, but it was okay. But my anxiety kept me from trusting that that bus driver was gonna take us safely up to the top. He's done it a million times, but I still didn't trust him. You know where I'm going with this? The Holy Spirit, same way. Got all of that experience, knows the future, knows our past, knows everything about us, but we still don't trust. Lord have mercy. One of the attributes of the Holy Spirit is to guide us. The Spirit guides us. He is the one who guides us into all truth. Amen? Amen. Amen. The scripture backs this statement up in John 16, 13 by saying, but when he, the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak of his own. He will only speak what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. Wow. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All right? So knowing that he knows all things, he knows what's getting ready to happen, don't I need to trust him? Do not I need to put my all into believing that whatever happens is going to be all right in my life? because of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was speaking when he said this, and we learn in an earlier sermon that Jesus told his disciples, but I tell you the truth, it is for your benefit that I'm going away, because if I don't go away, the Holy Spirit will not come. So we know that he had to leave. He's saying to his disciples, there will come a time when you won't be able to depend on me. You will depend on the helper, the Holy Spirit. Not only will he be with you, but he will indwell with you. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 speaks, did you not know that you are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwells in you? The spirit of God dwells in you, each and every one of us. We are the temple of God, amen? Now often we are not aware of the presence of God, Sometimes we think that we have to feel a certain way in order to, for the spirit to be present. It's all right to have feelings, but our trust in God is not based upon how we feel. Because some days I feel nothing. It has to do by the fact that God said it. He said it. And when he says it, we can lean on that and trust in what he says will be true. Now we know that God is omnipresent meaning that God is present everywhere. Uh, he, God has immediate knowledge and direct power over the whole universe. God's presence is not limited by time and space. And because God created the universe, he is above all things, and God holds this whole thing together. Who wouldn't want to trust somebody like that? Who is above all things and holds it together? Holds it together. Jesus works and miracles were localized to where he could be at the time on earth, all right? We know that he couldn't be in a thousand places at once. He was limited by a body, all right? So, he, uh, he, when he returned to glory, the Spirit of God came to indwell believers so that the presence of God could work through us and continue the work of Christ throughout the earth. So we are the vessels of God. We are spreading the message of love and salvation all over the earth. So it's important that we don't quench the spirit of God. Now we talked about thirst quenching a few weeks ago, but then there's the other way of quenching the spirit of God. Uh, it, you know, God has granted us the power we got choice. We can release the power of God in the church and in the community, or we can restrict the power of God, all right? It's, it's up to us, all right? The spirit is like a fire whose flame he wants to, uh, for us to just be consumed with that flame. The Holy Spirit wants to intensify the heat of his presence among us and to inflame our hearts and to fill us with the warmth of his indwelling. Now, the Holy Spirit is speaking you all to us all the time. The Holy Spirit is always speaking to us all the time. And sometimes we, we get to this place where we start second guessing him and saying, is that really what he said? Is that really God? Is that really God? All right, so whether we're wondering, okay, so the Old Testament is full of stories of 
prophets and they had dreams and they had visions and they had situations. And it's interesting to me, and I heard T.D. Jakes once say this sometimes, that sometimes we're so busy that God has to bypass our thinking and get to us while we're sleeping. <laughs> he speaks to us. So there's tons of stories in the Old Testament about God coming to people in dreams because I imagine while they were awake, they weren't paying attention to God. So God uses often dreams in Genesis 30. But God came to Abimelech in a dream one night and said to him, you are as good as dead because of the woman that you have taken. She is a married woman. We know that story with Abimelech and uh, Sarah. Genesis 31, 24, when God came to Lathan, the Aramean, in a dream at night and said to him, be careful not to say anything to Jacob, either good or bad. In Genesis 37, Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him. Matthew 20, or sorry, sorry, 2, and having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, the wise men returned to their country by another route, and uh, Matthew 27, Pilate's wife had a dream. And in that dream, she told her husband, don't have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today in a dream because of him. So God speaks to us in those times when we're not really conscious of what's going on, like sleep. And uh, amen. So the spirit of God. Now, one of the most profound stories and the most amazing stories I've read, read, actually heard in the Bible is a story of Cornelius. I love this story because it, it shows about how God spoke to two people that were in two different parts. <laughs> and he was trying to get them together and he spoke to them individually. So the Spirit of God spoke to Cornelius in dreams and Peter. Now the dreams were very significant. At that time, many of the Jews, um, they were confessing and believing Jesus as the Christ. And, but there was some conflict and some serious debate because some of the Jewish leaders and some of the new converts were saying, um, well, Jesus came to save us, but they had doubts about whether he had come to save the Gentiles. So, because in their um, cultural beliefs, they believed that Gentiles were unclean folks, all right? So, God had to get the message to them, that's not, that's not what I'm thinking. I don't believe that Gentiles are unclean. So the way he did it is incredible, so hang with me. So there was a, the, the, uh, a man of Caesarea named Cornelius. He, he was a centurion, and uh, he and his family, they were, they were devout, and they were God-fearing people. So uh, one day at about 3 in the afternoon, he had a vision. And, and I'm not sure if he was awake, if he was taking a nap, whatever it was. It said he distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius. Cornelius stared at the angel in fear, and that happens a lot, and he said, what is it, Lord? The angel answered, your prayers and your gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering unto God. Now, what I want you to do is to send two men to Joppa and bring back the man called Simon Peter. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. So Cornelius called two of his servants and told them everything that had happened in the dream, and he sent them to Joppa, part one. Next thing. The next day, as they were on their journey to Joppa, Peter went up to the roof to pray around that same time. So while he was up there on the roof, and I hear it gets really hot up there on the roofs, so he got hungry, and he was waiting for somebody to cook his dinner down on the lower floor. But something happened to him. His meal was being prepared, and he fell into a trance. And I've heard some people say it, it's possible that it could have been heat exhaustion from being up there, or, you know, he probably fell asleep, all right? So while he was asleep, he saw heaven opened, and something like a large sheet being let down to the earth by four corners. It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. And a voice said to him, get up, Peter. Kill and eat. He said, surely not, Lord. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time, saying, 
Do not call anything unpure that God has made clean. Now, God did that three times. <laughs> he said, rise up and eat. I ain't doing that. Rise up and eat. I don't eat that kind of stuff. And so, <laughs> Mom Peter, he woke up and immediately the sheep was taken back into heaven and he started wondering about the meaning of this vision. And then around that time when he came to himself, <laughs> what happened? The men that Cornelius had sent were right outside the gate of his house. They called out asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. So while Peter, he's still thinking about this vision and what the spirit had said to him, uh, three, somebody came up to him and said, Simon, there's three men looking for you, so get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. That's what God is saying. That's God. He's saying, Simon, this is the spirit. There are three men waiting for you. Do not hesitate to go with them. The spirit told him. So Peter came down and said to the men, I'm the one that you're looking for. How would he know to say that? <laughs> The spirit had just told him. He said, but why have you come? The men replied, we have come from Cornelius the centurion. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. Then Peter invited the men into the house. I believe they probably spent the night and you know had a good evening, good food. So the next day, they started out and some of the believers of Joppa came along with them. They arrived at Caesarea. And Cornelius was expecting them and had called together his relatives and his close friends. As Peter entered the house, Cornelius met him and fell down at his feet in reverence. But Peter made him stand up. He said, get up. I'm only a man myself. While Peter was talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people, and they were Gentiles. And he said to them, now you all are aware of this. It is against the law for a Jew to associate or even visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent me? So he didn't even know. Well, he knew that God had sent him. He didn't know the reason why. Cornelius answered and told Simon about his dream and that he sent for him because the spirit spoke to him through an angel. So I sent you immediately and it was good for you to come. Now we're all here in the presence of God to listen to everything that God has commended you to tell us. So... What does he do? He preaches. He preached to the first group of Gentiles ever. But do you see how God had to knock him out? <laughs> because he was probably steeped in tradition saying, no, 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 no. Jews and Gentiles don't hang together. We don't eat together. This is offensive. But God waited till he was in a trance. The spirit, when he was unconscious, to speak to him about something he needed to do in his conscious state. Go tell the folks about Jesus. So he preached to the Gentiles the first time. The Holy Spirit fell on them all. They spoke with tongues. They were baptized in the name of Jesus. And they made history that day. Now Peter said, I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation, the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord of all. Amen. Amen. Things would have been very, very different if that had not happened. But the Holy Spirit, in both situations, had these folks dreaming. And they woke up from their dreams, and they did what the Spirit of God tells them to do. Now, that's just one way that God speaks to us. The Spirit speaks to us through the Word of God, the Scriptures. 
The Spirit of God speaks to us spirit to spirit. Sometimes you have that deep knowing in you that God told you to do something and God is impressing it upon your heart and you can't run from it. It's there. It's not going anywhere. The Holy Spirit speaks spirit to spirit, spirit to spirit. The Holy Spirit speaks through our life circumstances, whether there's roadblocks or whether there's a free road where you can gun it up. God speaks life circumstances. The Holy Spirit speaks to us through other believers as they share wisdom to us. Amen? Another thing I wanted to say was that the Holy Spirit, I think, has blinking lights, like yellow lights for us. Metaphorically, we've all seen those blinking light situations where the Spirit says, no, don't do that. <laughs> don't marry that one. <laughs> don't eat that. <laughs> don't go there. And lastly, the Holy Spirit in 1983, 84 maybe, me and my husband, we were going to uh, a church to interview as uh, pastors. And, and I may have shared this, I don't know, but just for the sake of the sermon. So we were scheduled to be on a flight uh, to Dallas on the Delta 88. And they were going to pick us up in Shreveport, no, in Dallas to pick us up, the, the pastor and his family. But at the last minute, he got this uneasiness about us flying into Dallas and he switched the flight plan that morning to Shreveport, which is not as close to where we were going. So we went to the pastor's house and after we got to Shreveport, he drove us to Pittsburgh, Texas and we all had dinner. But then I kept getting phone calls from people saying, where are you? What we didn't know is Delta 88 crashed. Delta 88 crashed in Dallas uh, from wind shear. And it was the Holy Spirit, I know, that told him to switch our flight that day, switch that flight, and come to Shreveport and not Dallas. Fly in, to, pick him up at Shreveport. So those, those red light, those yellow light flashings that the Holy Spirit does, and we could thank God for that. Those times where there's low visibility, when you can barely see. Going through Florida, there's a sign that says bear crossing, right? <laughs> Certain parts of it. But then some days the, the visibility is so low, you couldn't see a bear if it was coming at you or not. <laughs> okay. So during those times of low visibility, when you can't see, the Holy Spirit will tell you where to go whether to pull off the road or to gun it through the fog, I don't know. <laughs> but we have the Holy Spirit as our guide along the road. Amen. Praise God. We are going to continue singing. Amen. If you'd like to stand, come on, stand with us as we sing our last song. Spirit of the living God, fall, fall, fall fresh on us. Mold us, make us, whatever you want us to be. Let's sing together, Spirit of the Living God.
The grace of the word of life rest on you. The love of the source of life may he embrace you. And the transforming power of the breath of life help strengthen and even surprise you this day and all of your days. Amen. Amen. Be blessed. Have an awesome week. And we'll see you soon. Amen. Thank you for our guests for coming. Yes.